review by Fat Ninja Studios. I'm your host, Jackie Kay, and today we are spreading the word of Don't Look Up, a dystopian, apocalyptic, dark comedy that almost nails it. Before we get started, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to nuke that bell icon to stay up to date with our latest releases. Spoiler warning ahead. The film kicks off with Kate Dibiaski working in the Michigan State University Astronomy Lab, and she discovers a comet near Jupiter. Her professor, Randall Mindy, figures out that the comet is on a collision course with the Earth, and that it's large enough to cause mass extinction. They take their findings to NASA, and then with the help of Teddy Oglethorpe, bring it to the attention of the president. President Orlean doesn't seem to give a shit. She's got re-elections coming up, so this causes Kate and Mindy to freak out a bit, and they decide to leak the information to the press. Using propaganda like fake news, the astronomers are basically laughed off into the oblivion. However, when a sex scandal begins dominating the news, President Orlean decides to use the comet as a diversion and announces a plan to blow it out of the sky using nuclear weapons. The mission is underway, but then is canceled mid-launch when tech billionaire Steve Jobs, oh, I mean Jeff Bezos, oh, wait, Peter Ishwal, says that there's trillions of dollars worth of rare minerals on the comet and that they should mine it instead. This, of course, sets off Kate and Mindy, who are like, what does it matter how much it's worth if we're all dead? This creates a divide in the world. On one side, we have people claiming the scientists are alarmists and the comet will create jobs, while others celebrate the end of the world in various ways. Kate basically yeets herself out of the movie by moving back home to Illinois to start a nothing romance with some shoplifter. Mindy, however, tries to stay involved, hoping that this mining operation will be enough to break the comet, but some fact-checking and calculations doesn't seem like it's going to work out. When he questions Ishwo, he is basically blacklisted, so then he goes on TV and rants about the end of the world and how much people don't give a shit. Mindy and Kate reunite to start some social media campaign to get another mission going to stop the comet, while other countries haven't stepped up to stop the U.S. isn't really explained in the film, but whatever. They get a plan going, but it blows up in their faces. The Earth is doomed! Ishwell and Orlean, amongst other rich people, get on a spacecraft that will take them to their new home, while Kate and Mindy and their loved ones have dinner till the comet hits. Credits roll, and then an after credits scene plays where we see the escapees land on this new planet, and while trying to figure out how to start a new society, Orlean is eaten by a dinosaur. Oh, and her son apparently is the only survivor on Earth. The end. Overall, the film was okay. If you have Netflix, it's free, so it doesn't cost you anything except for two hours of your time. With that being said, it's not an awful film by any means, it just misses its mark. The meta-context humor of the film is kind of all over the place, especially the performance by Jennifer Lawrence, who looked like she just phoned most of it in on a groggy morning with no coffee. If that was what her character was supposed to be representing, then why did they choose to make her look like she was the meme about the super agitated, offended by everything, left-wing extremists complete with colorful edgy hair and apathetic one-liners? On the other hand, talents who clearly reveled in their roles, such as Meryl Streep playing the president, didn't get nearly enough screen time, and clashed with other actors like Jonah Hill, whose comedy is just a different style. All in all, tonally, the film was inconsistent and the pacing was mostly boring with standard, we need a funny part here story beats. However, there is a great story here, and when the director and cast get it right, it hits with both cringe and dark hilarity. Being a satire of how the United States of America, under a Republican-led government, handles a world-ending crisis is an obvious reflection of what happened during the Trump administration. Replacing Make America Great Again with the film's repeated line, Don't Look Up. If it had just tighter writing and took a little bit more of the punchier risks, it could have been one of the best end-of-the-year comedies. 
but instead it just eeked by with a few chuckles here and there. My final complaint is that it was so focused heavily on just America, as a big chunk of the film was a dig at social media. Even though they combined Steve Jobs with Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg to form some anti-billionaire narrative, I guess. My point is, the world is far more connected now than it ever was before. It would have been kind of cool to see some more other countries respond to what the U.S. is doing, instead of just ham-fisting the joke that they all waited till America came up with a solution and then failed trying their own. I'm going to give the film a 6.5 out of 10. Worth checking out, but not worth my time spreading the word for people to go see it. I want to thank you all for checking out the video. Please leave it a like, share, and subscribe. You can reach out to us on Twitter at StudiosBat or chat with us on Discord linked below in the description. I've been your host, Jackie K. And before I go, what would you do if you found out the world was ending at a set time and there was nothing that anyone could do about it? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, watch out for one another. We're all we've got. Thanks again.